the reforms that uh, she put out in the third plenum are extraordinary in, in terms of the scope, the scale, uh, covering, you know, social issues uh, like uh, normalization of the labor market right up through the environmental area to the, the to the very most important economic issues that the country faces. Uh, the need to fix the municipal finance system, the need to develop a modern uh, economic uh, system, uh, the need to uh, continue with the SOE reform, and, uh, uh, you know, because recognizing that the private sector is a future of the, uh, of the country. So a very broad, ambitious uh, economic reform agenda number one. Number two, she put his credibility on the line. He said, I'm responsible. I'm going to get this done. This is important. That's the, uh, the good news. Uh, the, the bad news is it's going to be difficult to get done. It's really difficult to, uh, to rebalance a $10 trillion economy and do what they know they need to do which is to develop a new economic model, one that's much less uh, d dependent on investment-led growth, government investment in infrastructure, much less dependent on exports, m much more dependent on domestic-led growth, uh, one where the market is decisive and the market plays a decisive role. That's very important. That's what they need to do. It's easier said than done. Now, he recognizes this, so he's given himself seven years. And the good news also is he said, you know, he set up this central leadership reform group or central leading reform group uh, to, you know, spearhead this effort. And he's in charge of that. Uh, as I said, the good news is he set it up. The bad news is he needs to set it up because there's going to be a resistance in the bureaucracy. Now, as I look at this, I think the, the, the fundamental thing I'm going to pay attention to is what is happening to competition because t competition is the key. And there are three things I'm going to look at most closely. First is, are they opening up the important industries to competition from the private sector? I'm talking about industries like finance, telecommunications, energy. So are they going to let the private sector companies come in? And secondly, are they going to put the SOEs on a level playing field, take away the special advantages and subsidy? And then the third thing that I'm going to look very closely at is, are they going to open up to foreign competition? Because there's two types of reformers in China. There are those reformers that agree that they should increase competition and increase the opportunities for the private sector, but are not sure they would like to let in foreign companies. And then there are those that understand that the only way you're going to develop competitive world-class companies and to strengthen those companies is to subject them to world-class competition. And only if you let major uh, global companies come in and compete it, are you going to have the kinds of su success that they'd like to have in terms of developing an, an efficient uh, economy that's that's really vibrant and where they have world-class companies. They can't succeed with the current economic model. They've The current economic model has taken them as far as it's going to take them. Uh, not just because they can't keep building up debt and relying on government investment and infrastructure to drive growth, and not just because that they can't keep relying on exports given the size of their economy and what's happening to markets in Europe and, uh, and, and, and slowdowns other places in the world, but because the Chinese people aren't going to put up with some of the negatives 
that and baggage that has gone along with that growth, which is dirty air, which is killing people and shortening life expectancies, dirty water, uh, unsafe food. So they understand this. They understand that this is not going to be about just growth. This is going to be about higher quality growth. It's going to have to be slower growth. It's going to have to be an economic model that places much more emphasis on energy efficiency. They're going to need a different energy mix over time. They're going to need different transportation strategies. They're going to need a different urbanization model. But again, the reason that the Paulson Institute is as active in China as we are, and the reason we have this climate change air quality program, this is a leadership team that knows how important it is to address these issues. If they want to stay in power, they're going to have to make progress on these issues. And if we as a world are to have any hope in uh, avoiding the worst outcomes uh, and the worst re economic risks and environmental risks that, are, that will accompany climate change and to and have any hope of having a, 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 f a functioning, healthy global ecosystem, China needs to make progress. So it's in both of our interests. It's in the U.S. interest and in China's interest to work together. And if you get the biggest developed nation and the biggest developing nation working together and working in a complementary ways to address this problem, then I think we've got a much greater chance of, uh, of avoiding the worst outcomes. Xi Jinping is a strong leader, and he, he's someone that understands the importance of the private sector. So in, in the provinces where he's had experience, whether it's Zhangjian or whether it's Fujian, you take a look at the role of the private sector, and it's, it, it's been very important. Uh, he understands politics. He understands, I, I believe, business. And so I, I have uh, confidence in this man's leadership ability. But it's going to take a really strong leader because the challenges are extraordinary. And meeting the expectations of the Chinese people is going to be next to impossible because this is a country that had delayed and, you know, just put off the most difficult, important reforms for the last 10 years. And so right now there's no luxury to wait. China needs a new growth model. As I said, that's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to conceptualize that. This is not an intellectual problem. This is a political problem. It's an execution problem. And I expect there to be bumps in the road. But as I said, this is a, uh, this is a strong leader and he's got a, he's got a huge challenge.